Mr. Kaufman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and thank you for your service, uh, General uh, Odierno, Secretary McHugh. I'm concerned about, uh, I, I agree with you in the bottom line it cuts. I, I believe the cuts can be made to the Department of Defense. I don't believe that, the, I believe the sequester goes way overboard. I don't think there's any disagreement uh, in that, uh, in this committee on either side. The, but, but let me just say, express to you some areas that I think that I would like you to look at because I'm concerned that we're cutting capability and by cutting capability we're increasing risk uh, to our national security. Uh, one is I, I just think that there's, uh, there's a top-heavy nature uh, to our military across the board. I think if we look at the ratio of flag officers or general officers uh, to the, the number of soldiers, and this is in every branch of service, I believe, that it, it's, it's just um, we're too top-heavy, and we ne really need to look at, uh, at slimming that down. Next, I, I know there's talk about that we ought to um, slow down um, pay increases moving forward as a cost savings measure. I disagree with that, but and let me give you another area I, that I would like you to look at, and that is slowing our promotion system down. I think that, I'm, first of all, I think it moves too fast. Uh, I think that we would increase the, uh, not only have a cost savings, but increase the professionalism of our military um, by uh, slowing down the promotion system, allowing soldiers to spend more time in grade uh, in their respective military occupation and specialties before they move on. Uh, when you have an organization that has the kind of quality that the Army, United States Army has today, which is extraordinary, uh, and you have the kind of retention with highly qualified soldiers wanting to remain in the Army, it only makes sense that we do the math and we slow down uh, the promotion system. Um, next, I think Guard and Reserve. I'm very disappointed that we have cuts in the Guard and Reserve uh, that envisioned in your plan where I think what we ought to be doing is increasing the size of the Guard and Reserve, uh, quite frankly, through reductions in the, on the active side. I mean, Secretary of Defense Gates, before he left, warned this committee repeatedly of the trajectory of personnel costs and how it was in eating into acquisition costs, uh, irrespective of, of the cuts that are before us now. And so, to me, we can retain capability uh, and, and do uh, savings by looking at our force structure and more aggressively uh, transferring units to the Guard and Reserve uh, that we don't need, say, expeditionary forces or, or forces that truly need to be uh, on active duty. Uh, you know, next, uh, um, I'm concerned about we're going to go through a BRAC round, a Base Realignment Closure Commission. Um, at the same time, that we're still retaining uh, a permanent bases overseas without adequate participation of our allies. Um, uh, in NATO, uh, uh, most of our NATO partners are spending less than 2% on, on GDP on defense. We're at about 4.7% right now. Um, yet we're, we have 45,000 troops in Germany, uh, 79,000 troops, I think, in Europe altogether. Uh, we are moving two brigade combat teams, heavy brigade combat teams, I understand, out of, out of Germany, uh, out of that 45,000. But I think we ought to look at, uh, if they're not in involved in the prepositioning of forces, if they're not uh, expeditionary in nature, they ought to come out of Europe. We can demonstrate our capability uh, by doing some of the things you, you mentioned, uh, having rotational forces, and certainly doing joint military exercises uh, demonstrates our um, our, our commitment to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. In uh, South Korea, you mentioned 20,000 soldiers uh, in South Korea. Uh, we have, there are substantial, and this is obviously DOD, military construction programs uh, going on. I, I think, I, I believe it might be suspended, some of it might be suspended in terms of looking at bringing dependents over. Um, but at a time when South Korea is spending 2.7 percent of their GDP, um, you know, it, it, so we're looking at closing uh, bases down in the United States uh, and yet retaining uh, overseas uh, permanent military bases uh, for allies that are spending much less on defense than we are. We, we need to get them to, to do more. And so uh, let me leave it open to you on those points. But I, I'm disappointed in the direction of these cuts, and I think they compromise capability where I don't think we need to. 
first of all, and I'll try to go as quickly as I can, sure. we agree with you on general officers. And in fact, that was an initiative that Secretary Gates had already begun. General Erdierno could speak very eloquently as of the closing down of a, of a COCOM uh, and GIFCOM and an elimination of a four-star. We downgraded the number, uh, the four-star to a three-star U.S. Army Europe and on and on and on. Pay increases. I'd love to see what ratio you would come up with between flag officers and soldiers at the end of that. And I, I'm sorry that we're out of time, Mr. Mr. General. Mr. Chairman, I, we'll go back. If you could get to me on the record on any of these questions, I really appreciate it.